Okay, now whether we start the conjugation. This is slowly, slowly I'm building you up, you know. And we are only doing fiel madi, past tense. We will not touch mudariya. We will only do fiel madi. Okay? So, we start with puva. And then I write down homa. And then we are doing hum. Now this is, brother and sisters, third person masculine. And then I'm doing here, here, and then I'm doing here, homa. Okay? And then I'm stopping here. All the verbs in the root form that I wrote previously, I said, he sat, he went, he left, he drank. Okay? I said, he, he, he. So what is the meaning of it, brother? In the root form... Uh, which is past tense, the, it is always singular, third person, masculine. Hmm? No discrimination, brother and sisters, but that's the way the language is. Huh? It is always huwa. We start with huwa. Take any verb, it will always be huwa. Huh? Masculine, third person, and singular. Are you? Hua is third person, it's masculine, and it is singular. So keep that in mind. That is why we start with a Hua. Huh? I will start with Zahaba now. Huh? Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Zahaba. This is again I'm repeating, because it's good to repeat, you will get stronger. Okay, Zahaba is fial. What is the meaning of fial? Action. If there is a fial, if there is an action, there has to be a doer of action. You cannot have an action without somebody doing it, brother. And what is the doer of action called? File. File. Huh? You will remember this, huh? File. What do I call file in English? Subject. Okay, brothers and sisters? <clears throat> so, now, I, as I said, if there is an action, there has to be a doer of action. So, Zahaba, okay, Zahaba, where is the file? Mostatir, what we call it? Mostatir, huh? remember this word, Mostatir, means hidden, Mostatir means hidden, okay, hidden, okay, fine. I am putting a star here, huh? okay, now, how do I say two people went? Look at it. First, I write down the word. Zahaba. And then, I say to it, Alif. What is it now, brother? Zahaba. Okay, where is the verb? Where is the verb? Zahaba. Where is the file? Alif. Because I add it. So now the file is a part of it. Huh? Part of the, they are together. This is a very beautiful thing in Arabic language. Huh? Brother and sister. Okay, brother, next one. Hum. First I write down the verb, zahaba. Okay. Now I'm adding, wow. Huh? I'm adding, Wow, with a sukun. And brothers and sisters, this alif is a spelling rule for the time being. This is alif. Whenever you will have hum, then you will see alif also written. Okay, brother. Because of wow, I change this fata into dhamma. So this is zahabu. Are you with me? This is Zaha Bu. Where is the file? Wow. Where is the fail? Zaha Bu. Huh? Without wow, Zaha Bu. Where is the file? Wow. Now remember, these are pronouns, and these I am putting are also pronoun. Because Alif is equal to Homa, and Wow is equal to Hom. Okay? Now, 
I say Zahaba. Okay, and then I'm putting here open ta with a sukun. How do you pronounce it? Zahabat. Huh? Zahabat. What is this ta? Tautanisi. What does it tell me? That the doer of the action was this time a feminine. Okay, where is the file? Mustatev. Never ever say this is file. Brother, I have a very weak heart. I'll get a heart attack. Huh? Okay. This is Tao Tanisi. Where is the file? I'll put a star. It means it is Mustatev. Huh? Fine, brother. Now I say to you, Zahaba, and then I put Ta here. Now, brother, I put Aleph. Huh? I put Aleph. Because I put Aleph there, huh? then I have to make this into Fata. So it became Zahabata. Huh? Tell me one thing. Where is the verb? <coughs> Zahaba. Huh? Zahaba. What is the next thing? Tautanisi. And what is the next thing? File. So see, this has got three sections. Fial, Tautanisi, and File. I am so happy to meet some of my students, brother. When we sit down and do analysis of the Quran, we pick up a sentence in the Quran and we try to analyze it and understand how the sentence was constructed. And you come across verb and these students are able to trace it back to the root. It's so beautiful, brother. Inshallah, you will do it. You will all become expert. You and I, we may not speak Arabic fluently. But we will become master of Arabic verbs, inshallah. We will know Arabic verbs left and right. And brother, people run away from Arabic verbs. Huh? They say, Arabic verbs? Oh, it's, it's difficult. No, brothers and sisters, Arabic words are beautiful. They are fascinating. They are enjoyable. So brother, kha raja. What is kha? Fa kalima. First radical. What is Ra? Ain Kalima. Second radical. What is Jeem? Lam Kalima. Third radical. Huh? Okay. And if I tell you any other word, you will also do the same way. Now I want you to look at the difference. Huh, brother? Kharaja. Now I am writing Zahaba. Then I am writing Jalasa. And then I am writing uh, Raja. Do you see here, brother? What do you see? Fa kalima? Ain kalima? Lam kalima. Now I write down something else. I write down here two very popular verbs. Samia. And then I'm writing shariba. Okay, brothers and sisters? Samia. What is the meaning of samia? He heard. Huh? Or he listened. Shariba, he drank. Okay, fine. What do you see here? Fa kalima, ain kalima, lam kalima. First radical, second radical, third radical. Okay, are you with me? Now I write down two more verbs, brother. Karuma, and I'm writing another word here. Bauda. Okay, fa kalima. Ain kalima, lam kalima. First radical, second radical, third radical. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Now, if you were to observe this, you will find something. And I told you last time. That fa kalima in all of them has a fata. And the lam kalima, all of them has a fata. So that is the rule. All the verbs, the root, in the root form, fa kalima will always, always have a fata. And lam kalima will always, always have a fata. And what about ain kalima? 
and kalima can have these three vowel signs. It can have a fata, it can have a kasra, and it can have a tamba. Huh? So this we have to be very observant, you know. For example, samia. See the ain kalima has a kasra. Shariba, ain kalima has a kasra. Karuma, ain kalima has a dhamma. Huh? Bauda, ain kalima has a dhamma. So be, watch for it, okay. Now, these verbs are called healthy verbs. What are they called? Healthy verbs. al fialo sahi. Healthy verbs. Brother, if something is healthy, then it has to be somebody who is very weak or sick. Huh? Because for a healthy person, there is also after someone who is not healthy, which means he is sick. So there are some verbs which are called weak verbs. I won't call them sick verbs. They are all weak verbs. Now this is just a general information. Any verb, huh? any verb, brother and sister, whether... It has fa kalima or ain kalima or lam kalima. If it has vow and ya. Are you with me? Huh? If it has vow and ya, then it is a weak verb. What is it? It's called weak verb. Huh? In the meantime, we'll become stronger in our sahi verbs. In which verb? There will be no vow, there will be no ya. Huh? There will be no vow. As you can see, I didn't put any with vow and ya. Okay? So keep that in mind. Mm -hmm.